I thought I was the only one still alive. I can't believe I found you. It, it was like a shockwave. It, it passed through the entire base. Hey, what the hell's going on up there? I'm recording this video log to let someone know what happened. And with that knowledge, prevent it from happening again. So you've made it this far. myself for my part in this. Please, someone. Never let this happen again. Your friends are with me now. Soon, you will join them. Two decades since its release, the masterfully crafted world of Doom 3 continues to draw us back. Its enduring appeal maintained by the meticulous work and passion poured into its creation. A key element of the game's atmosphere, often overlooked, is the portrayal of multiple characters desperately trying to survive following the demonic outbreak. Initially, the depth of these characters might be missed. The survival against the forces of hell takes precedence. But on revisiting the base's halls, it becomes clear that these characters hold deeper stories waiting to be uncovered. You need to report to Sergeant Kelly ASAP. This video will introduce and focus on these poor souls, those workers, scientists or soldiers who withstand the initial chaos and are encountered, seen or heard by the player. We'll explore their stories, some offering crucial insights, while others only witnessed in their final moments. While some of these individuals survive longer than others, the game's narrative makes it clear that ultimately only three peoples are fated to endure. We will begin with the lesser-known characters and then end with main figures such as Kelly, Swan and Campbell, while also extending a coverage to include the Lost Mission expansion characters such as Dr. Myers. Huh? No, no, please. You must let me get this communication Dr. out. Dr. Jonathan Ishii, a Delta Lab scientist, was instrumental in creating a new interdimensional portal under the supervision of Dr. Malcolm Betruga. Ishii grew increasingly concerned as Betruga was overextending the portal stabilization fields. These safeguards, meant to block entities from entering the portal from the other side, were being dangerously and, as it later became clear, deliberately stressed. The devil is real. I know. I built his cage. I'm getting abnormal readings here. This is bad. Ishii, oh, recognizing the impending disaster, sought to warn Earth about the severe threat, but was halted by the Marines sent to find him. However, his delay in sending the message might have been a hidden blessing. An earlier alert could have led Earth to dispatch ships into a demon-infested base, worsening the situation. I say again, fall back to Marine HQ and await further... Trying to reach Marine HQ, the player navigates through Mars City Underground, while the screams of fellow Marines being slaughtered by demons pierce his radio. No, no, please, no. These unnamed voices belong to squad members of several teams stationed on Mars. While we are already familiar with Bravo Team, two other squads are also mentioned in this chaotic backdrop. Man, Fire Team 2 presence is felt solely through radio communications. They were stationed near the sub-level monorail when the chaos erupted. Command HQ, this is Fire Team 2. The monorail track is destroyed. Unable to secure safe transportation back to base. Over. The fate of Fire Team 2 is left to our imagination as they receive no further mention in the narrative. Our next segment will take several leaps forward in time, revealing that a member of our subsequent squad endured through the entirety of the game's events. Squad leaders give sit reps. Over. Command HQ, this is Bravo Team. We've got one man down and several wounded. We are incoming and need medical on stage in stacks. 
The player first hears about Bravo Team's journey over the radio as they fight the demonic forces. They manage to reach Marine HQ, where Sergeant Kelly, now at Delta Labs, assigns them a critical mission to send a distress signal to Earth's fleet. By the time the player arrives, Bravo Team has already moved on. It's your mission to link up with Bravo Team and get that transmission sent. Head toward Alpha Labs. It's the fastest way to find them. However, tragedy strikes at the Enpro facility as the team is ambushed by demonic forces. There's nothing here, Sam. Go on! Despite the onslaught, two Marines survive the attack. One of them, knocked unconscious, is dragged to Empro Sector 1. Upon regaining consciousness, he faces a task far more critical than mere survival, preventing another demonic invasion route. I can't believe someone's alive there. My name is Richard, Dr. Richard Myers. Meanwhile, the player finds the second survivor gravely injured. I don't know how much farther I can go. This Marine, in a final act of service, hands over the vital transmission card before becoming yet another victim of the demonic invasion. The sole surviving member of Bravo Team later receives essential guidance from Dr. Richard Myers to seal the alternate gateway. Okay, Marine. I'm receiving your signal from the communication relay. Ultimately, both the final Bravo team survivor and Dr. Myers managed to endure the events of Doom 3. Nice work, Marine. Returning to the early stages of the invasion, we'll examine several workers who avoided possession, yet their fate is implicitly sealed. <laughs> The player notices a scientist running on a walkway. Earlier, this same person was seen speaking harshly to a maintenance worker. Your job and get the science team what they need. Well, I'm doing everything, but I just can't explain some of the things that have been happening to the systems. Just get it done. He now appears to have seen others around him turn into the possessed and is trying to escape in a state of panic. The area is overrun with demons, suggesting that his death occurred shortly after the encounter. Here, the player has the option to save the scientist from the zombie, which would ultimately only delays for a moment his inevitable demise. I've done this a million times. It's not that hard. Why don't you crawl your fat ass down here and do it yourself? Ross Fry, a maintenance technician, is encountered during an argument with the unseen Scotty, who is busy with power couplings in a maintenance shaft. Upon returning to the site of their previous argument, the scene is harrowing. Ross Fry's remains lie scattered before the shaft, while from within, Scotty's final screams echoes. It's particularly unsettling to consider that Scotty likely heard Ross being slaughtered before witnessing the imp enter the confined space, sealing off his only way of escape. Moving through the corridor, a startling moment occurs as a body suddenly falls from the ceiling. A faint, desperate whisper escapes from the wounded figure. Help me. Hey you, up here, quickly. Roland, a maintenance worker in Mars City, assists the Marine from a ventilation shaft by lowering a ladder. I thought I was the only one still alive. It was like a shockwave. It, it passed through the entire base. People started changing. When presented with the chance to follow, he opts to remain in his position. This decision leads us to believe that he likely met his demise shortly after the player leaves the area, especially since there are now multiple ways for the demons to access the maintenance section. In this level, the attention to detail is remarkably immersive. If players listen attentively, they'll notice muffled gunfire echoing in the background, a subtle but effective indication that, beyond what we see, there are still more individuals engaged in a desperate fight against the invasion. Manage you. This is Specialist Wilson. My team is gone. They're all dead. I'm running blind. What are my orders? Over. Specialist Wilson, voiced by John Carmack, is featured in a radio communication with Sergeant Kelly. We overhear this exchange upon our return to Mars City, yet his fate remains a mystery. 
Close to this ventilation shaft, a conversation can be overheard, yet the speakers remain unseen. Don't let anyone in that room. What is thing? Look, what? What was that? The shaft's connection to a nearby room suggests that one of these voices could be that of a scientist who suffered a violent demise, having been attacked by an imp while on a video call. Adding to the mystery, it's possible that this unknown character was seen earlier in the game. Although not an indisputable point, as most of his face is missing and many characters share similar attire, both appearances showcase identical clothing in the same area, suggesting they may be the same individual. You need to report to Sergeant Kelly ASAP. He's in Command HQ. Holmes was first encountered before the invasion, stationed at Marine HQ. Upon the player's return to Mars City, he is seen without his helmet, meeting a violent end at the hands of a possessed civilian. Don't stop, buddy. There's nothing you can do for me. They're all gone. This Marine's destiny is partially shaped by player interaction. Excessive communication with him triggers his death. This came out of nowhere. If left alone, Webb is later found deceased upon the player's return. Oh, he startled me. Man, I'm ever glad to see you. I thought I was all alone. It's been freaking spooky lately. George Creepman, a research assistant in Alpha Lab Sector 1, narrowly survived the outbreak by secluding himself in a corner to stabilize hydrocons, crucial for making Mars and the UAC labs habitable. The hydrocon's blown a few circuits and is unstable. Be careful of that gun. A stray bullet into the glass shields could blow the whole area. Remarkably, despite a colleague's body nearby, Creepman appears oblivious to the mayhem unfolding outside his immediate work area, engrossed in his vital task. Oh, oh, this is reaching anyone. I'm broadcasting on a very low frequency. If you can hear me, I'm not far. Please help me. I've locked myself in storage room C4. Please, if anyone can hear me, please help me. The unknown survivor in C4 has become something of a legend, his presence perceived but never confirmed. Initially, his voice reaches out via radio from the Alpha Lab's ventilation ducts. Although not explicitly labelled, the discovery of a concealed room beneath a floor plate in the engineering area sparks speculation about this enigmatic survivor. A second, garbled transmission suggests he might be undergoing a transformation. Yet afterward, an eerie silence prevails. Remarkably, there's no physical evidence of his existence. No zombies, corpses, body parts, or even bloodstains are found, deepening the mystery surrounding his fate. J. Edwards, a scientist in Alpha Lab Sector 2, first appears to the player via security camera and later in person. Electromagnetic pulses have knocked out the electrical systems in this area. Watch out. A big one could knock out our... He offers to guide the Marine with his light through dark areas. Tragically, they are ambushed by imps just before reaching safety. Hey, you! Can you help me? I'm trapped in here. Release the door locks and get me out! Chief researcher Larry Kaczynski found himself trapped in a chamber in Sector 4 of the Alpha Labs, unaware of the chaos outside these walls. The player faces a crucial decision upon encountering the scientist, to either open the chamber and save him or activate it, killing him in the process. If saved, Kaczynski decides to stay locked in his office for safety and continues working on fixing the system issues. One significant item he provides is the PDA of Security Chief Abrams. He was in Alpha Labs to investigate a communications breakdown and likely met a grim fate during the invasion. If the player activates the chamber, two Z-Sector zombies appears. Speculation says that Abrams might be one of these zombies, 
which would indicate he was attempting to free Kaczynski from the chamber before succumbing to the outbreak. The systems are responding. If the player acquires Larry Kaczynski's PDA, they'll find an amusing, albeit suspicious, message from Dr. John Okonkwo, a supposedly civil servant in the Ministry of Health in Nigeria. This well-known scam invites victims to send a small amount of money on the promise of receiving a much larger sum in return. Whether Kaczynski ever took the bait on this proposition is one of the game's many unsolved curiosities. We realized a full 50% gain in the storage capacity of ammo packs as a result of utilizing techniques engineered in the Alpha Lab's molecular compactor. Teresa Chassar was a weapons analyst at the UAC, working on the Series 3 plasma gun. She experienced unwanted flirting from male colleagues, notably her boss, Lloyd Renstrom. I would also like to mention that all of the employees here at the Enpro plant have been very helpful and quite eager to accommodate all of my requests. During the Enpro level, the player encounters Teresa in a disturbing scene where she's transformed into a lost soul. She was the only female character seen in the base game, though others are mentioned, and it was hinted through her PDA messages that she was friend with Elizabeth McNeil. Who are you? What are you doing? I was waiting here on the train for my partner. He went to investigate what was going on, but he never came back. T. Ryan, an archaeological scientist at Site 2, decides to stay locked in the tram during the invasion hoping to reach Delta Labs safely. Unfortunately, his remains are later found alongside a trite, suggesting a fatal encounter. He might be connected to Mark Ryan, a Mars sector officer, and his partner is likely the Marine seen transforming into a commando during the level intro. Oh, thank God. You're not one of them. I thought everyone else was gone. I... I was part of this. I helped... Ian them. McCormick. A research specialist assisted in Betruga's teleportation experiments, leading to unethical practices and the discovery of hell as the portal's destination. He witnessed Betruga's entry into the portal with the Soul Cube just before the invasion. Our initial thought might be that demons killed him after the player's departure. I've made a lot of mistakes. I'm sorry. However, the regret in his audio log and a pistol on his desk suggest he may have been overcome with guilt for the unfolding events, leading to him taking his own life. Ah, you surprised me. I've been studying one of the specimens we brought back to see if there's something physiological that would be a weakness, a way to stop them. I found nothing so far. When the player encounters him, Dr. Michaels declines to stop his research, hoping to uncover more insights about the demon weaknesses. Jacob Stemmons, an analysis supervisor in Delta Labs 2B, becomes trapped inside a maintenance shaft moments before the invasion. He had been complaining about the power fluctuations in the specimen transfer area to the UAC maintenance division. They asked him to check the breakers by himself, but got locked in due to another power issue. As he hears the player nearby, he calls out for help, unaware that his pleas were also heard by an imp which reaches him before the player can intervene. Initially seen as a standard horror element, the appearance of this character from the portal warrants further inquiry. Specifically, what was he doing on the other side, long after the invasion had begun? Given the player's knowledge about scientists researching the Soul Cube, it seems this individual, possibly with a team, entered the portal to retrieve the artifact in a bid to halt the invasion. Unfortunately, they likely fell victim to demons, and though this lone survivor managed to escape back through the portal opened by Betruga, he was quickly pursued by Hell Knight, leading to the iconic scene of his demise. You killed him. What? You have the soul cube. 
just like in the carvings I've been researching. Pierce Rogers, a prominent archaeologist at Site 3, made significant contributions to the study of ancient Martian civilization, notably uncovering the soul cube and stone tablets that chronicle the history and sacrifice of this ancient society. He managed to survive a considerable portion of the invasion by remaining in his office at the artifact research room. They created the soul cube and used it to stop the demons, to drive them back to hell. That is why that artifact was left behind, left for someone to find if something like that ever happens again. Should the player choose to eliminate Rogers, an archvile spawns near his office, suggesting that his demise would have been imminent after the player departure. Who are you? What are you doing here? Jay Katayama, a maintenance worker in the caverns area, survives much of the invasion, marking him as the final survivor the marine encounters. He is found hiding from the demons under thermal regulation pumps. Will you please leave me alone and go get some help? Having delved into the stories of the lesser known characters, we now turn our attention to the more familiar faces in the game. I can't believe it's come to this. I didn't want to come here. He left you no choice. Swan, alongside his bodyguard Campbell, arrives at Mars City with a mission from the board. Following Elizabeth McNeil's complaints, they are tasked to meet with Betruga and investigate his research. I'll manage this, and you and your flunky will be taking control of nothing. Do you understand? Yes, Betruga. Post-portal opening, Swan realizes Betruga's refusal to assist and embarks on a quest to sever Mars's communication with Earth, aiming to contain the invasion. Their attempt to disable the communication relay partially succeeds, but the player reaches the satellite control room in time. Here, a decision is offered. Follow Kelly's directive to transmit a distress signal or align with Swan's strategy to cut off communication. Unfortunately, neither choice matters as Betruga independently issues an alert to the fleet. Campbell and I were unable to reach the main portal in the Delta Complex, but that portal may be inconsequential to a more disturbing discovery. We have uncovered reference to another portal, created by the demons themselves, a passageway between Hell and Mars. We suspect it resides within the cavern somewhere near the archaeological dig. The journey to Delta Labs marks a grim end for Swan and Campbell as they face betrayal by Sergeant Kelly, now an ally of the demons. The ambush leaves Swan gravely injured, compelling him to send his bodyguard alone in pursuit of the fallen sergeant. Where are you hiding? Earth. <coughs> That's what they've always wanted. They were there once, lost it in the dawn of time. Campbell, outmatched by Kelly's newfound allegiance, succumbs to mortal wounds, leaving the player as the only one able to put an end to this evil. Have you located Counselor Swan? Yes, sir. He's dead. Roger, Recon 1. Took his sweet time, Marine. Now, here's the situation. Sergeant Kelly, a decorated military veteran, arranges for the player's transfer to Mars, stepping in as a replacement for Corporal Allen, who was sent back to Earth due to psychological issues. Here's the situation. Another member of the science team's gone missing. Since you're the ranking FNG, you get to find him. After assigning the player his first mission, Kelly leaves Marine HQ. This is Sergeant Kelly. We're under attack by an unknown enemy force. Fall back to Marine HQ to regroup. I'm unable to return to Mars City. All passages out of the Delta Complex have been blocked. I'm setting up a command post here. For a significant portion of the game, Kelly's presence is experienced solely through radio transmissions, providing guidance to the player, leading him through the base and offering updates on Bravo Team status. Always clear. Marine, Bravo Team is down. Their operational status is unknown. They were carrying a military transmission card. It's vital you retrieve that card as it contains encoded data needed to send the distress signal to the fleet. Watch out for Campbell and Swan. Those UAC suits don't give a damn about what happens to any of us. The player's decision to transmit or withhold a message is followed by a revealing video encounter with Kelly, who appears altered from his previous self. This is Kelly. Delta Complex 1 has been compromised. You're not safe there. I'm moving to Secure Service Tunnel 1. It's not far from your position. We'll meet there. 
deeper into the game's narrative, it's discovered that Kelly had turned on Swan and Campbell. The extent of his betrayal becomes evident when he is revealed in a new, terrifying form, a fusion with a tank-like vehicle. This transformation into the demonic entity, Sabaoth, leaves room for speculation. Was Kelly an accomplice of Betruga from the start, or did the scientist force him into this dark alliance? Rise! Welcome to the mess hall! Your duty has always been to die, soldier! Dr. Richard Myers, a specialist in teleportation at Exis Labs, reveals crucial insights into the teleportation technology and Dr. Betruga's schemes prior to the invasion. On Project Apollo, it was capable of teleporting a small-sized team to destinations on this new dimensional plane. We could only teleport small equipment with a Delta IV teleporter, and this condition frustrated Dr. Betruger. At Exis Labs, the goal was to create a large teleporter, similar in scale to the one at Urbis. It would be powerful enough to transport large equipment, even dropships. Petruger was so impatient on seeing results from this research, he had the engineers start work on the teleporter once the facility reached 75% completion. Meanwhile, disturbing developments were unfolding at Delta Labs. Investigating rumors, Dr. Myers discovered alarming information by hacking into Betruga's personal logs, an action that was noticed by Tony Bates from the security IT division. The systems intrusion that took place in the CPU complex yesterday. The more recent logs detailed how demons, yes, demons, contacted him through his dreams, offering him unimaginable powers but they demanded he find a way to help them reclaim Earth. However, as he uncovers Dr. Betruga's intent to use the Exis teleporter for a direct demonic invasion of Earth, Dr. Myers devises a plan to destroy it by overloading it with a massive power surge with help from the Enpro team. Tragically, the Hell invasion claims the lives of all Enpro personnel Left isolated in Exis, he awaits assistance to finalize the power rerouting, a critical step in thwarting Betruga's catastrophic plan. I can only pray God will forgive me for my part in all this and help me make things right. Lord, save my soul. Dr. Myers stands as one of the few who survived the harrowing events of Doom 3. However, both he and the last Bravo team survivor are curiously not recognized as such in the introduction of Resurrection of Evil. This oversight could hint at a classified status, or perhaps just a simple error in the storyline development of the Lost Mission expansion. This marks the conclusion of our video. Our series will continue with the events of the expansion Resurrection of Evil, where we'll explore more stories from the events of the second outbreak. We'll also broaden our focus to the game's villains, expanding beyond Betruga and Kelly, to delve into the lore of demons like the Vagary, Cyberdemon, Hunters, and Hell Guardians.